So now today's chapter is on diseases of brinjal. Brinjal is a very important crop and but we find here that there is a only three set of pathogens which are causing diseases in this particular crop. We will discuss only three major diseases which are prevalent in our country. Number one, little leaf which is caused by a phytoplasma. Number two, bacterial wilt which is caused by Rastonia solonitia. Third, Formopsis fruit rot or blight which is caused by Formopsis vexens which is also known as Diacopte vexens. Now the little leaf of brinjal which is caused by phytoplasma, how do we diagnose it? The name itself implies that the leaves become small or little in size. The affected plants have narrow, soft, smooth and yellow shorter leaves. So that is why you know the, the name implies that little leaf of brinjal. So we are seeing that the symptoms in the symptoms also the leaves are very small. Newly formed leaves they are much shorter. The internodes become shortened and the axillary buds get enlarged but the petioles and leaves also remain shorter. Giving the plant a bushy appearance. So it looks like a bush. Mostly there is no flowering. And if the flowers are formed, they remain free. Young fruits turn necrotic, they get mummified and cling to the plant. So this is the whole range of the symptoms we find and therefore it becomes very easy to diagnose when it comes to the little leaf of bridge. Now you are seeing all these photographs, all these symptoms which are well depicted in the photographs. Now what is the, how this disease is transmitted? So we should know that this particular pathogen, it perinates in the wheat hose, in the weeds. So you know the weeds are very common in the vegetable crops. So there are some weeds where this particular pathogen, it perinates. Who are the transmitters? They are jacets, some of the jacets which transmit this disease. Number one, Hishimonas physitis. This is an important jacet which transmits this particular disease. It is also transmitted by Amposca, Devastance, however, it is a less efficient vector in this particular disease. Some of the varieties like Pusa Purple Blom and Tea Selection, they are highly susceptible. There are some collateral hosts also, for example, Datura Festusa, Datura Stramonia, Vinca Rosia, Argimon Mexicana, Chili, Tomato, and Tobacco. So, these are some of the collateral hosts. So, how this disease is perinating and getting transmitted. Now we come to the management. There are some tolerant varieties like Pusa purple round, Pusa purple cluster and Arka shield. They have been reported to be as tolerant varieties. We should see the plants. Soon we see the affected plants. We should immediately destroy them. We should also try to eradicate the solanaceous wheat hosts. Some of the hosts, weeds, which belong to the solanaceous families, we should remove them. We can also apply tetracycline as a seed dip. I mean the dose should be 10 to 50 ppm. And for the spraying, we can spray methyl dematon at the rate of 2 milliliter per liter or melathion 3 milliliter per liter or we can also use forate granules for the soil application. So this is how we manage the disease.